The new advanced GPT voice mode is available to the world, at least to me, and it is shocking and going to profoundly change the way we do almost everything. What do you think? I'm sorry, but I'm having trouble responding right now. Oh, well, never mind. We're fine, guys. It doesn't work. Okay, so I downloaded this last night and just started using it this morning. And my take on it is different than the take that I've been seeing online. Uh, specifically, I think, I mean, I love Matt Wolf, but Matt, Matt Wolf's perspective on this was surprising to me. But it also seems to be a kind of a average response to this voice mode. Here's what Matt Wolf had to say. Well, if you're talking like practical use cases, I don't know if it's like, I just happened to pause the video here while I was editing and thought you'd like to see this. A whole lot better than what I was getting. It still was able to respond to my questions. I don't really feel like it's gonna give me better information than it used to. It's still kind of giving me the same information. It just seems to be doing it in a more fun, more human-like conversational way. And I like that. So I agree like that. I mean, it's it's not I, I assume I don't know anything about this stuff, but it's it's just based on GPT 4.0, just 4.0. It's just one of the most revolutionary products to ever hit humanity that you can talk with like a human. I don't understand how you can have an experience like that where you're talking to an intelligence that is beyond me blows my mind. And I don't understand the opinion of it like, oh, it's just fun. It's just a toy. It was just like, you know, when you were a kid and you'd... What was that little device? It's in Toy Story. As much as I love Matt Wolf, and I do, I just was surprised by his reaction of just like, it's just fun. It's just fun. It's just fun. <laughs> It's just a fun toy. What? Let's continue. I think that's fun. I can see myself using this more. I kind of will probably use it more for the novelty purposes. That novelty is really fun and really cool to show off from like a practical business use case from a how am I going to actually implement this more in real life? I, I don't know if it really improves things a whole heck of a lot, but it's just fun. And sometimes that's what all of this is about. Like, uh, so and maybe, maybe I'm just off here. Maybe there's a lot of people who are just like, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to use it. This to me is maybe the most transformative product or tool to ever become available to humankind. Am I overstating it? Maybe. I don't think so. But as a way to dive in, I want to show you a couple of clips from Johnny Keeley. He has double the subscribers that I have, so I hate him. He was playing around with the voice mode prior to the advanced voice mode because there's been a voice mode with ChatGPT for a while. It's just been kind of slow to respond and less emotionally refined, I suppose. But his reaction to it is the same as my reaction. And I'm like, yeah, he gets it. This is what he described as being so shocking to him using the previous slow old voice mode. This thing's wild and I don't think that I've even figured out how powerful this thing is and I don't think I'll figure out how powerful it is as fast as it gets better. I can't believe there's people walking about out there just walking about and they don't know that this is happening. What are they going to do? I love his reaction of like, I don't know why they think that's so funny. What are they going to do? That's how I feel. I feel like this technology now exists. It's in the world. And the average person walking down the street who's never even opened ChatGPT has only heard of ChatGPT. I feel like there's this tool, this secret magical device. It's almost like a sleeping dragon has been awakened. And there's only some people who know of the dragon and are actually using its power to fly around. And everyone else is like, oh, yeah, I've heard about these dragons flying around, but I tried one once and that dragon was stupid. You know, and you're just sitting there like, do you know what you can do with that dragon? And people are like, eh, it's just another stupid dragon. I don't understand trying this technology and just being like, ah, it's just a fun toy. Eh, what it's just fun. All right, let me play another clip from Johnny here because he, Johnny gets it. Ready to hit the road? You see, everything changes when you don't have to use your hands anymore. When you can just have a normal kind of human conversation, a tireless conversation where this thing isn't going to get tired of all the stupid questions that you're asking. Hey, if I was to ask you to reply in quite short sentences because we're recording, would, would you be able to do that? Absolutely, Johnny. I could keep my responses short. Well, I want to pivot the channel a little bit. I still want to do the Instagram. Okay, so this is the thing. This is how I think this GPT advanced voice mode can be so impactful. 
at least from my perspective. Prior to this, like most people, I've been pretty locked into my own brain when it comes to thoughts, ideas that I wrestle with. Deep down questions I have or interests that I have. I have thoughts, okay? I have deep questions. And even beyond like the vast abyss of questions that I have about life and the world and God and our place in it, I also just have a lot of topics and areas of interest that I know really nothing about and I wish I knew more about. And the way that I would expand my thinking, either about questions and topics or practical areas of life I don't know about much about, is either through listening to podcasts, listening to other people who are smarter than me, reading books, watching documentaries, or just like on long car rides or when I wake up in the middle of the night, just thinking about them which gets me nowhere. The problem with thinking for me is that my IQ doesn't allow my thoughts to go very far. It's good to think, no doubt, but it only gets me so far. And I tend to just end up in the same place every time because I don't know that much. You know, people have expanded their minds either through thinking because they had a high IQ. And if they just thought about a problem, their mind would let them add to the concepts they were playing around with in their mind. You know, it could expand inside their mind. And the other way that people throughout history would expand their ideas and minds and viewpoints was through conversations. And conversations are extremely powerful and helpful just to bounce ideas and thoughts off other people. We live in a world today, however, where conversations happen less and less because we're more and more isolated because of our devices. Conversations take place online. We read comments, we read Reddit threads, we'll read X, we'll read posts, and we'll listen to conversations that other people are having with each other. And that helps expand our mind. But for me, it often just leads to more questions. And the best way that I've found to get those questions answered or at least solidified in my brain to where I can feel like I'm actually making progress towards an idea or a solution to a problem that I have is through conversations. When I can talk through a problem or a question that I have with somebody else, even if that person doesn't know a whole lot about the topic. And it also, even more profoundly, allows me to remember things better when I can talk about it. If I just lock an idea away in my brain, like I read a book or I listen to a podcast, most of the time those ideas are gone the next day. But if I have an idea that's so profound that I talk about it with a friend or something or my wife, those ideas tend to stick around in my head and I can then build a staircase in a sense to actually bring more meaning and significance to those ideas. So all that to say, one of the major difficulties that I've had is finding friends and people who align with my thoughts, who are open to having the conversations that I want to have conversations about. Because a lot of the thoughts and ideas I have, I feel like I can, you know, share only a certain amount. And and the conversations also, you know, will tend to drift somewhere else because I can tell like, okay, I'm, they're, I'm kind of losing them. Like I could keep talking about this same thing forever, but I know that they're not that into it. So anyways, this brings me to this voice mode and the idea of using it to have conversations about ideas or concepts that you're wrestling with is absolutely profound. Deep philosophical thoughts that no one else wants to talk about. I can talk about with this thing, this thing, which also brings me to what's so terrifying about it, because what is this thing? And how do I know that the information I'm getting back from it is accurate or relevant or not biased? Because of course it is. It's created by San Francisco people whose ideology is probably drastically different than mine. And that's what this thing's trained by. And so as we begin having a conversation with it more and more, it's going to influence us to a degree that I don't think the world's ready for. Because these devices already hold so much influence over us because we use them constantly. Our view of the world has shifted. Our view of each other, our view of everything has shifted because of these devices. And now when you can actually have a conversation with it, that as Johnny Keeley pointed out, never gets tired of you, can open up your mind so much because it's extremely intelligent. So it'll say things back to me and sort of repeat back what I said, but with profound ideas and reasoning and and an approach to an idea that was outside of my own that just makes my brain it just i find that i continue to have these aha moments when i speak to it which is so odd and i know a lot of people i think are like this is stupid it's so stupid that you just start talking to your phone everybody's been doing this for a long time 
You're allowing it to influence you, whether you're scrolling or using it to type into Google questions that you have, or you're using Siri to ask it to do things for you. We're using our phones more and more. We are way more cyborgs than people realize. And so this is just a natural extension of that. That is so natural that I think it may profoundly change the way that we do everything. I know it will me. I mean, I'm going to use this thing to just have natural conversations because I can get to clarity and an idea even in work so much faster because, well, I I'll end with this, but I learned recently that there's this approach to writing that allows you to get to your authentic thoughts and ideas much easier than traditional like journaling for two minutes you just write whatever enters your mind as fast as possible you're not consciously trying to sound more profound than you actually are you're not really intentionally aiming for any outcome in what you're writing you're just writing down everything that pops into your mind as fast as possible after the two minutes you just sit there and read it back and you're like oh huh it opens up what your true thoughts are because you're writing your true thoughts in real time like nothing else That concept of just letting your thoughts out quickly is exactly what's happening with this conversation because conversation happens so naturally. I can just talk in real time. And what happens often when we're talking is we're getting to this place where our real time thoughts are just being communicated out in real time. It's like brainstorming in real time. And that's what's happening with this. But then I can ask the GPT to summarize our conversation and pull out the most profound ideas or interesting topics that we discussed or ideas And then I can have it do whatever I want with that in business sense or for content. I can have it come up with a video idea or a script. I can have it create a blog for me. I can have it just save some of these ideas and remember them so I can return back to them. To me, it streamlines the process of ideation like nothing else. It gives you this mental free flow that happens in our brains maybe, but it captures it. I can return back to it. I can have it summarize a long brain flow and have it repeat back to me some new ideas that make me go like, dang, I haven't thought of it like that. It gives me a new perspective on ideas or thoughts that I have. Insane to me. I don't think enough people realize the power of this and how it can be used to change the way that we think, that we process information, how it can change our perspective and our ideas in real time. And then the ability to take all of those thoughts and ideas and use them for our business, for content, to take the business in a new direction. The other thing is that this is going to get far smarter. Like this is the dumbest it will ever be. And the conversations are only going to become more and more natural with an intelligence that is going to continue to exceed my own at a pace that is unmatched by probably any other technology ever. The way that this can transform everything that we do is beyond what I can even comprehend right now. I think this is a really, really big deal. But I guess for some people, it's it's just like a fun toy. It's just fun. Which I don't understand. But I guess, you know, we all use tools differently. Anyways, if you like this content, subscribe to the channel. I just started it. And I'm going to continue uh, posting AI thoughts and ideas as often as they come to me. So watch out. <laughs> all right, that's the end.